This is a recording of Spiritual Struggle by Elder Paisius of Mount Athos. Spiritual Councils 3. This is by the Holy Monastery of the Evangelist John the Theologian in Soroti, Thessaloniki, Greece. This is part one. The War of Thoughts. <clears throat> When man sees everything with good thoughts, he is purified and receives the grace of God. By bad thoughts, man condemns and wrongs others, preventing divine grace from coming and allowing the devil to come and do his evil to us and in us. That was a preface quote. Chapter 1. Good and Evil Thoughts there's a note here, I'm going to read it. The term logismos, reason thought, in the ascetic writings denotes either a simple thought that passes through the mind, or an emotion of the soul directed towards good or evil, or even a good or evil tendency, which has been acquired with the help of the mind, the conscience, the emotions, and the will. Since a thought precedes every action, for this reason the struggle of every believer, but primarily of every monastic, to be authentic requires constant vigilance and examination of these thoughts in order to cultivate the good and discard the evil. Now we proceed to the chapter. The Power of Good Thought Geronda, in the Old Testament, in the book Maccabees 4, it is written, For devout thought does not uproot the passions, but is their antagonist. What does this mean? Answer. The passions are deeply rooted in us, but the good devout thought helps us to not become enslaved to them. When man brings only good thoughts to mind and establishes a strong and healthy spiritual state, then the passions lie dormant and it is as if they did not exist. In other words, devout thoughts do not uproot the passions altogether, but combat them and can defeat them. I think the author is describing what the seven holy young men, their mother Saint Salome, Solomon and their teacher Saint Eleazar, were able to endure by having good and devout thoughts, and thus is indicating precisely the extent of the power of good thoughts. One good thought is equal to a very long vigil. It is very powerful, similar to how certain new weapons can intercept a missile at its base by using laser beams and prevent it from being fired. So good thoughts can also anticipate and immobilize evil thoughts at the devil's airports where they are launched from. This is why you must struggle as much as you can before the tempter devil has a chance to plant evil thoughts in your mind, to plant good thoughts and transform your heart into a flower garden so that your prayer will be enriched by the divine fragrance of your heart. When we hold even the slightest grudge, a small bad thought about anyone, any ascetic discipline we may undertake, such as fasting, vigils, and so forth, will be in vain. What will be the use, what will be the use of such ascetic disciplines if one does not struggle concurrently to prevent and reject all evil thoughts? Why not first empty the vessel of any impure residue oil, which is only good for making soap, before putting in the good oil, why should we mix good oil with filthy residue? A single good and pure thought has more power than any ascetic exercise. For example, a young man is tempted by the devil and has impure thoughts, and he undertakes vigils and three days fast in order to be rid of his impure thoughts. But one single good and pure thought which he manages to bring to mind can have greater effect than the vigils and the fast. It can be a more positive help to the young man in overcoming his problem. Question: Geronda, when you say pure thought, are you referring to specific matters or to more general ones? Answer: 
I am also referring to more general matters, for when man can see all things with good thoughts, he is purified and filled with the grace of God. Well, with evil thoughts, one condemns and wrongs others, impedes the coming of divine grace, and then the devil comes to do his evil work to us and in us. In other words, Jeronda, do we give the devil the right to attack us just because we condemn someone? Yes, everything starts from good thoughts. This is what elevates a person and changes him for the better. One must reach a point of being able to see all things in purity. It is as Christ said, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And having acquired this, man can reach the point of seeing everything with spiritual eyes, not physical eyes. All things can be justified in the good sense of the term. We must be careful not to accept the devil's evil messages so as not to pollute the temple of the Holy Spirit, thereby banishing the grace of God and bringing spiritual darkness to our soul. When the Holy Spirit sees our heart in purity, he comes and dwells in us because he loves purity. That is why he manifests himself as a dove. The greatest disease, evil thoughts. Jeronda. I am anxious and can't sleep when I have a problem to deal with. Answer. Your basic problem is your many thoughts. If you didn't have all these thoughts, you would be able to accomplish much more in your assigned duties and in your spiritual life. Here is one way to avoid all these thoughts. When you think of something that, let's say, needs to be done tomorrow, tell yourself, this work is not for today, I will think about it tomorrow. Also, when you have to make a decision, do not trouble yourself with the thought of how to make the best decision and thus end up com constantly procrastinating. Make a decision and move on, then let God take care of the rest. Try to avoid being overly meticulous and scholastic about too many details, which will only confuse your mind. Do whatever you are able to do with philotimo, simplicity, and above all with great trust in God. This way we oblige God, in all manner of speaking, to help us when we place our hopes and our future in his hands. Even a healthy person will become useless with too many thoughts running through his mind. One who is sick and suffering can justifiably have worrisome thoughts, but one who is healthy and yet becomes confused and suffers from sinister thoughts deserves a straitjacket. To be healthy and yet tormented by one's thoughts is a terrible sickness. In our times, one of the greatest illnesses is the vain thoughts of worldly people. People can have all the good things in life except good thoughts. <clears throat> they are tormented simply through not facing up to things in a spiritual manner. For example, somebody sets out to go somewhere but has a little car trouble and is a little late getting to his destination. If he has a good thought, he will say, perhaps the benevolent God brought this delay in order to prevent a possible accident. How can I thank you, my God, for this? So he praises God for the delay. On the contrary, if he does not have a good thought, he will not face the incident in a spiritual manner. He will curse and blame God. What a misfortune, what a useless delay, and where is God in all this? When we accept whatever happens to us with a good and positive thought, we are helped, while on the contrary, we are tormented and come apart at the seams emotionally and physically when negative and evil thoughts prevail. Once years ago, we got on a truck which had some boards for seats in order to go from Oranopolis to Thessaloniki. The truck's interior was a mess. Suitcases, orange crates, fish, empty and dirty crates, fish crates being returned, students from Athonia school, some sitting and some standing, monks, lay people, one layman came and sat next to me. He was a little stout, and because he was somewhat squeezed, he began to complain loudly. What a state! A further inside the truck stood a poor monk, surrounded by crates, so you could only see his head. In the meantime, as the truck bumped its way along the cart, the monk had to remain standing and hold on to the wobbling crates to prevent them from falling on him. With all of this going on, the other fellow was complaining of being squeezed a little in his seating arrangements. So I told him, 
How can you be complaining when you see what the monk is enduring? So I asked the monk, How are you managing, father? And with a loud, with a smile, he told me, Geronda, it's better here than hell. One man was tormented, even though he was able to sit while the other was content to stand and be virtually buried under all those crates. And this was a two hour drive, not just a short ride. The layman's mind was on the comfort he would have had if he were riding on the bus, while the monk was thinking of the suffering in hell and was happy enough to ride in a filthy truck. He was thinking, we are going to reach our destination in two hours and get out, while the poor people in hell will be tormented forever. After all, there it is hell and not some unpleasant accommodations. Glory be to God, it is better here. Question. Geronda, how do you explain the varying degree of trust held by two novices towards their elder? Answer. Thoughts. <clears throat> One can have fault-finding thoughts about everything and everyone. If a man does not have a good thought and does not remove self-interest and desires from his activities, that is, if he continues to act selfishly, he cannot be helped even by a saint. A saintly elder, even Saint Anthony, and all the saints together, cannot help such a selfish man. Not even God himself can help such a person, even though he desires it very much. When someone loves himself and is selfish, he interprets everything in a way that suits his inner self. Some people interpret things carnally or in a sinful manner, others in whatever manner suits their ego, and gradually these irrational interpretations become second nature to them. No matter how you behave, they will be scandalized. There are some people who soar if you pay them some attention. If you tell them an encouraging and heartening word, if you don't pay any attention to them, they are deeply saddened and have an extreme reaction, which comes from the tempter, the devil. Or they may see some activity going on and say, aha, this is what must be happening. Later on, they convince themselves that this is indeed what has happened. Or they may see someone in a rather thoughtful mood and imagine that he has something against them, while in fact the other person is, pers is pensive simply because he is troubled by a personal concern. Some time ago someone came to me and said, Why did so and so used to speak to me but doesn't now? Could it be something I said? So I told him directly, Look, he may have seen you but not noticed you, or had something on his mind, such as a sick friend who needed a doctor, or the necessary, necessary currency to travel abroad and so forth. In fact, the other person really was worried about a sick friend who needed to be taken care of, but because this man was expecting undivided attention and his friend did not stop to talk to him, he allowed a whole series of bad thoughts to go through his mind. Good thoughts lead to spiritual health. Geronda, what are the characteristics of a weak thought? Answer, what do you mean? This is the first time I have heard of such a thing. Geronda, you had said that for one to have a sinister thought, to misunderstand someone's behavior, and I call that a weak thought. I remember the person who wanted to stay with you and be a novice under your guidance and you told him, I cannot keep you because you have weak thoughts. No, I didn't say it that way. I told him, I can't take you as a novice because you do not have spiritual health. And he asked me, what do you mean by spiritual health? You do not have good thoughts, I told him. As a man, I may have my faults, and as a monk all these years, I may also have some virtues. If you do not have good thoughts, you will be harmed by both my faults and my virtues. One may say of a small child that it has weak thoughts because it is still immature, but you can't say that about a grown-up. Are all grown-ups, Geronda, mature? Some, because of their mind, their way of thinking, do not mature. I do not mean someone who is mentally challenged and does not understand. But when someone does not behave and act simply, his thoughts turn to evil things and he interprets everything the wrong way. Such a person does not have a spiritual health, and is not helped even by the good. He is tormented even by the good. 
Jeronda, if we notice that something is out of the ordinary in the monastery, out of order in the monastery, should we try to find out who is responsible? First, see if you're responsible. That is the best thing to do. But, Jeronda, what if others provide occasion for doubt? How many occasions have you provided if you think of this? You'll realize that you are making a mistake to deal with such situations in this way. What about when we say, this is clearly something that sister so-and-so has done. Is this also a sinister thought? Are you sure that it was done by that sister? No, but only because she has done something similar on other occasions. Again, it is a sinister and inappropriate thought since you cannot be sure who did it. Even if it were done by that sister, no one can know how and why she did it. Jerona, what if I see that a certain sister has a particular passion? Are you the abbess? The abbess bears responsibility for this and it is her duty to examine the passions of all the sisters. But why should you be examining the passions of the other sister? Unfortunately, you haven't yet learned to work spiritually on yourselves. If you want to do spiritual work on yourselves, do not examine what others are doing around you. Instead, have good thoughts about both the good and the bad you see in others. Regardless of the reason why someone does something, you must put a good thought in your mind. A good thought contains love. It disarms the other person and makes him behave properly. Do you remember the incident with those nuns who took a thief to be an Abba? When it was revealed that he was a thief, they continued to think that he was a fool for Jesus Christ and only pretending to be a thief and revered him all the more. In the end, they saved both him and his companions. Jeronda, when a sister tells me a lie, answer, what if she was forced because of you to say a lie or if she forgot and if what she told you was not a lie? For example, the nun responsible for hospitality, knowing there is a salad in the kitchen, asks for a salad from the cook, who replies, I don't have any. If the nun responsible for hospitality does not have good thoughts, she will think, She's lying, but if she has good thoughts, she will say, the poor nun, she is so busy with her work, she has forgotten that there is still some salad left in the kitchen. Or she may think, perhaps she is saving the salad for someone else. You do not have spiritual health, and this is why you think like that. If you had spiritual health, you would see even the impure as pure. Just as you recognize the value of fruit, you would also recognize the value of manure because manure helps fruit to grow. Whoever has good thoughts also has spiritual health, and what is evil can be changed into good. I remember during the German occupation, the physically strong children ate with a hearty appetite a piece of bobata, bobota, which is bread with corn and were very healthy. By contrast, some wealthy children who ate bread and butter tended to be sickly because they did not have a strong constitution. Something similar happens in spiritual life. Someone who has a good thoughts, good thoughts, even if struck unjustly, will say, God has permitted this in order to redeem my old faults. Glory be to God. On the other hand, Someone who does not have good thoughts will imagine you are trying to hurt him even when you try to caress him. Take an example from someone who is drunk. If he is bad, he will destroy everything in his drunken stupor. If he is good, he will be either weeping or forgiving everyone, both good, both the dead and living. One drunken man used to say, I offer a bucket of gold sovereigns to whoever envies me. Whoever has good thoughts sees good in everything. Some people tell me that they are scandalized because they see many things wrong in the church. I tell them that if you ask a fly, are there any flowers in this area? It will say, I don't know about flowers, but over there in that heap of rubbish, you can find all the filth you want. 
and it will go on to list all the unclean things it has been to. Now, if you ask a honeybee, have you seen any unclean things in this area, it will reply, unclean things, no, I have not seen any. This place here is full of the most fragrant flowers. And it will go on to name all the flowers of the garden or the meadow. You see, the fly only knows where the unclean things are, while the honeybee knows where the beautiful iris or the hyacinth is. As I have come to understand, some people resemble the honeybee and some resemble the fly. Those who resemble the fly seek to find evil in every circumstance and are preoccupied with it. They see no good anywhere, but those who resemble the honeybee only see the good in everything, everything they see. The stupid person thinks stupidly and takes everything in the wrong way, whereas the person who has good thoughts, no matter what he sees, no matter what you tell him, maintains a positive and good thought. Once a high school student came to my Calivi and knocked on the metal knocker on the door. Even though I was reading a stack of letters at the time, I decided to go and see what he wanted. What is it you want, my son? I asked. Is, is this the Calivi of Father Pelicios? He asked me, adding, I want to see Father Pacius. This is his Calivi, but he's not here. He went to buy cigarettes. I told him, it looks like he must have gone to help someone. He responded with a, a good thought. He went to buy the cigarettes for himself, I told him. He smoked them all and was desperate for a cigarette. He left me here alone, and I don't know when he'll be back. If he takes too long, I'll just leave. The student's watery eyes gave away his emotion, and again he said with a good thought, We torment Father Pacius. Why do you want to see him? I asked. I just want to receive his blessing, he said. What blessing do you expect to receive from him, you fool? He's deluded. I know him well. There's no grace in him. Don't waste your time waiting for him to return. He'll be grouchy. He may even be drunk because he drinks too. In spite of all this, the young man was still having good thoughts. Finally, I told him, I will wait for him a little longer. What do you want me to tell him? I have a letter to give him, he said, but I will wait so that I can also receive his blessing. You see, no matter what negative things I related, he took them all with a good thought. When I told him about the need for cigarettes, his eyes began to well up with tears. Who knows, he thought. He must have gone to help someone. Other people are well educated and read a great deal, but they still don't have the good thoughts of that young student. You demolish his thought and he immediately creates a better thought and draws an even better conclusion. I marveled at him. It was the first time I saw such a thing. Thoughts of a sanctified man and thoughts of a cunning man. Geronda, can one who has sanctity perceive who is cunning? Yes, he can discern the cunning man just as he can discern the sanctity of a saint. He sees the evil, but at the same time he sees the inner man and discerns that the evil is from the tempter of the devil. Stimming from the outside, seeing through the eyes of his soul, he magnifies his own faults while diminishing the faults of others. And what's more, he sees all these faults in truth, not falsely. He may discern that some of these faults are even crimes, but he will find some justification. In the good sense of the term, for the cunning schemes of an evil man, whom he does not despise or consider to be inferior, he may even consider the evil man as being better than him, and he will knowingly tolerate him for many reasons. For example, he recognizes a criminal's evil nature, but thinks that the man may have become criminal because he did not receive help. He even thinks that he himself could have been a criminal if God had not helped him. This is how he receives much grace. On the contrary, the cunning man, while seeing the other man's sanctity, does not know the good thoughts in his heart, as even the devil himself does not know them. He who is doing refined spiritual work justifies others, but not himself. 
And the more he advances spiritually, the more he is freed, and the more he loves God and other people, then he cannot understand what evil means, for he always has good thoughts about others, and always thinks purely and sees everything in a spiritual and sanctified light. Such a person benefits from the falls of others, which he utilizes as a strong break on himself, in order to attend to himself and to avoid being derailed by the same faults. On the contrary, one who has not been purified within thinks cunningly and sees everything through the dim glow of cunningness. Even good things are polluted by his cunningness. Such a person does not even benefit from the virtues of others because he is darkened by the darkness of the man-destroying devil and interprets the virtues through his own cunning vocabulary. He is always aggrieved, and he always grieves others by his spiritual darkness. If he desires to be liberated, he must understand that he is in need of purification, both of the mind and of the heart, which will also bring spiritual clarity. Geronda, what happens when the same person is sometimes cunning and sometimes good? In that case, a man goes through the commiserate influences and changes. Man is mutable, cunning, cunning thoughts sometimes stem from the tempter of the devil, and at other times the man himself thinks cunningly. Often the devil creates the conditions that lead a man to evil thoughts. Once an Archimandrite came to the Calivi for the first time, but I did not get the chance to see him. The second time he came, I could not see him because I was seriously ill, and I asked him to come some other time so that we could talk. Then he had negative thoughts that I did not want to see him, and that I had a grudge against him. So he went down to the monastery and complained, all, all of this comes from the evil one. A person's thoughts reveal his spiritual state. Jeronda, how can the same thing be interpreted differently by two people? Do all eyes see with equal clarity? For one to see clearly, he must have the eyes of the soul in a most healthy condition, for it is then that he has inner purity. Why is it, Jeronda, that one person considers an event to be a blessing, but another sees it as a misfortune? Each person interprets the event according to his own thought. Each thing can be seen from its good side or its bad side. I had heard about the following event. In a monastery situated near an inhabited area, they kept the rule of celebrating vespers and matins at midnight, allowing the neighbors in the surrounding homes. They were built around the monastery by the time to attend these services, church services. Once a young novice monk went to the service and left his cell open and a woman entered. When he learned of this, he was troubled and worried because he considered this to be a very bad thing. My cell has been polluted. He took alcohol, poured it on the floor, and set fire to it in order to disinfect it. He almost set the whole monastery on fire. He burned the floor of his cell, but did not burn the thought in his head. He should have burned the thought because that was where the evil was lurking. If he had a good thought, he would have said that the woman entered his cell out of devotion to receive a blessing, to receive grace in order to undertake the spiritual struggle at home more fervently, and in this manner he would have been spiritually transformed and would have glorified God. <clears throat> a person's spiritual state is indicated by the quality of his thoughts. People judge things according to their heart's spiritual content. If they do not have spiritual content, they will draw the wrong conclusions and do wrong to other people. For example, one who is doing charity work at night so as to not be seen will never think anything evil if he should see someone late at night out on the street. But if a person who spends his nights in sin sees someone out on the street late at night, he will say, who knows where that bad fellow is spending his nights, because he himself has such experiences, or if sounds from the apartment above are heard by someone who has good thoughts, he will say they are praying and doing prostrations. But one with bad thoughts will say they are dancing all night long. If, if a melody is heard, the one will say, what beautiful psalmody, while the other will say, what kind of songs are those? Remember how the two thieves who were crucified with 
Christ addressed him. They both saw Christ on the cross, the earth quaking, and so forth. But what a difference there was in the thought of the one and the thought of the other. The one on the left blasphemed and said, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. The other on the right said, We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. One was saved, the other was lost. 